Due to the success of the inaugural Baskerville 1000, the second event was scheduled a couple of months later in July. What a mistake weather-wise this turned out to be. Both the Saturday event and the Sunday event poured with rain on and off all day. Due to the weather, teams had to nominate a dry time and a wet time to stick to. A safety car would be called to slow all cars down to allow the timing to be changed over between the two nominated lap times. A giant pit sign would also display to the drivers which time they had to stick to as an onboard lap timer or radio communicators are forbidden. We were again entered in the Sunday event which began in extremely rainy conditions. We elected to put Dad in the car who managed to score on a handful of laps along with a couple of other cars. After 20 minutes the sun came out and the track began to dry. A safety car was called so the timing system could be switched over to dry times. We pitted Dad and put me in the car. Everyone else stayed out as most driver stints were 30 to 40 minutes long. However, we knew something the other teams didn't. I went out on the dry track, which was actually extremely treacherous. The track was so cold it was like driving in the rain. I had to drive harder than normal to achieve our dry nominated lap time, but lap after lap I managed to score points. After my stint, I came into the pits and found that no other driver had managed to get close to their dry times. Our third driver went out on the now fully dry track and began scoring points. By this stage, however, we had already built up a 60 point or 12 lap buffer on everyone else. As the event panned out, we knew strategy would play a big role with the challenging weather conditions. The event would be run as a continuous six hour instead of being broken up like the previous event. This would negate our large fuel tank advantage and would mean we would need to make two pit stops for fuel. This created more strategy problems for us as the large fuel tank would take considerably longer to fill from empty than the required minimum seven minute fuel stop time. We came up with a strategy to stop every two hours so we would only have to put two thirds of a tank of fuel in the car. This meant we could complete the fuel stops in seven minutes like the smaller cars. We also planned to stop if a safety car came out as it usually took two to three laps for the timing system to be changed over. Our plan worked to perfection and we circulated all day scoring points while making our fuel stops at just the right times. By the second fuel stop we could tell when the safety car would be called and we held off until the rain got too bad and made the stop. Sure enough, as soon as we were in the pits, the safety car was deployed. We essentially didn't lose any time refueling. We also managed to score points on a lap behind the safety car as we were so far behind the pack of cars in front of us. Our strategies throughout the day worked extremely well and we were able to maintain a 75 point buffer to the second place car at the finish. At one stage, our lead had reached 100 points. The win was extremely satisfying as this time we only did 246 laps, which was only the 10th most laps out of the 24 competitors. We were far more consistent this time around. The green-eyed monster was now three wins from three starts.